By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome at another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a match between a counter burn deck, that's the one that I'm playing, against a white, blue, green, mid-range brew. And I'm actually playing against one of my patrons, I'm playing against Rich. Rich, welcome to the channel. And uh, before we are going to the actual games, I want to do a short deck deck. I have nice deck pictures of both of these decks. So if you're interested, stick around. If you'd like to go straight to the gameplay, you can check the description below and you can click on the timestamp and the timestamp will take you directly to game one. And here we are going to look at the decks. So this is the deck of my opponent today, Rich. And as you can see, it's white, blue and green. And we kind of see a lot of usual suspects here, or a lot, we see some of them. Surrender Pafrit's very powerful. He's actually very dominant in the air here. Look at that, he only has flying creatures. He has no ground creatures, so no Savannah Lions, for example. And it's interesting here to see he's playing two Disenchant, so he probably has a few in his sideboard. He's playing three swords. And look at that blue power there. And actually, there's quite a lot of power in this deck. I also like the inclusion of the Thunder Spirits. You don't see them that often in these type of builds. So he's not choosing to go for a ramp strategy, something you see often uh, with these decks, where they go for Lunar or Elves to quickly deploy their bigger threats. Um, instead, he's going for the big creatures and is going for that white control package and counter spells to kind of keep me at bay. Now an interesting card that caught my eye straight away is this card, the Telekinesis. You can see it here on the left side of your screen. So it's an instant from Legends for two blue and it reads, target creature deals no damage during combat this turn. Creature becomes tapped and may not untap as normal during its controller's next two and step phases. So you actually lose the damage of a creature for one turn, but it also doesn't untap for the next two turns. So basically, you know, um, it's it's gone, it's out of the picture for the next three turns. And that can be huge in old school. So I'm really uh, curious to see how Telekinesis is going to perform. Obviously this card would be a whole lot better if it would just say tap target creature, it doesn't untap in the next two untap steps. But I mean, it is still a very cool card. It's also two blue, very flavorful. That art by uh, Daniel Gallen is beautiful as well. And another card, if you look closely, at the deck picture of Rich, you may find a Time Elemental, which is kind of the odd card out here, but it's actually a Sarah Angel. So this is a, a misprint, and I believe it's an Italian misprint, and um, it, it happened, and they're out there. So you can actually get them, they're pretty rare, so it's really nice to play against one of these rare cards as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that um, Time Elemental slash Sarah Angel hitting the board in the game today. Okay, so this is it for Rich's deck. Let's take a look at my brew. The deck that I'm playing with today is a deck that's a little bit out of my comfort zone, to be honest. It's Counter Burn. It's a deck that you might not expect. It's definitely not a Timmy deck. I've played it before a few weeks ago, so um, and, uh, and it worked pretty well. I'm trying this out because it's such a new way of playing. And I guess the card that stands out the most is the card that's missing in this list, and that's Surrender Perfrit. So I've decided to take out the Surrender Perfrit and instead play with a playset of Suchis, and that also kind of opened up the possibility for me to play with copy artifacts. Now, a few years ago, I played against Gordon, who's a, a big counter burn player, and he already played with these copy artifacts. It was an EC tournament, um, and it was very interesting to see. He used them to kind of copy his Mistress Factory, so that's definitely an option for me, but I could also copy a Suchi or, of course, a Chaos Orb or any other uh, artifact for that matter. Uh, but copy artifact to me is just an insanely strong card. So to kind of go this route to Suchi, open for me the doors to copy artifact, open for me the doors to City in a Bottle. And it actually all started with me uh, while I was playing with this deck, noticing that Surrender Perfect is just so uh, incredibly vulnerable. There's just so many things that can happen to it. City in a Bottle is one of them. But, um, you know, Red Elemental Blast is another, and there are just a lot of ways against this. And also a Maze of If against a Surrender Perfrit is, is pretty lethal if I cannot deal with the Maze of If at that time. And this is also a deck where you can hurt yourself a lot with the Psy Blasts and the, um, and the City of Brass. So you also see that I only play with two City of Brass, so I've went back from four to just playing two City of Brasses. So I've kind of adapted my whole deck, and I'm, I'm trying out this new kind of mix. And for me... 
playing counter burn is very it, it's not in my nature like i like to build up stuff and to do goofy things so playing very much on value and waiting until the end step of your opponent before you do something that's really new for me so um it's 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 interesting to kind of try to develop uh, as a player. Anyway, enough enough said. This is my list. Let me know what you think of my choice to take out the Surrender Befreed. Am I simply crazy? Or, you know, is there is there some, some reason to that decision? Curious to hear from you. Now, without further ado, let's go to game number one. Game number one. And I'm sitting on the left side, obviously, with the Timmy Playmat. Playing against Rich here on the right. Look at that. Playing a Savannah. And I'm playing another duel, the Volcanic Island, playing a basic island. That means that my counterspell is online right now. Beautiful lands. We are playing according to Atlantic rules, by the way. So the biggest difference here in this game, because we're both not playing with Fallen Empire, but that's that we're playing with Mana Burn. And look at that. I've put a Loa on, but there is a very quick uh, strip mine, of course. One last activation for me with the Loa. And playing here... A Mishra's Factory and that Mox Sapphire, so I can start dealing a little bit of damage maybe if I activate it. Probably not going to do it because I'm afraid for Disenchants and Swords with that white mana open there. And a City of Brass from Rich here. So let's see what I do. I'm actually playing another basic. And I like a lot of mana because that kind of gives me the option to always keep two blue open. Playing with Counter Burn, I like my Counter Spell options. And it looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here, deciding not to play anything or to activate my factory instead passing turn here. Rich taking damage from his own City of Brass, going to 19. Look at that, a beautiful Thunder Spirit. Beautiful card. No counter spell for me here, because I can, of course, exactly play a Chain Lightning. I think, by the way, that, you know, chaining a Thunder Spirit, how, how in the is that possible? And I think they should change that. And because he stepped out, by the way, I'm attacking with my factory, seeing an opening there. Putting Rich on 17. And there is a second Savannah here. No Savannah Lions in this brew from Rich. And he's almost at 5. And that means he can start playing out some Sarah Angels. Now remember, we haven't seen each other's deck lists prior to this matchup. But of course, you can expect a Sarah Angel. And there it is. Wow. And I think this is a problem here for my opponent, opens two white, so probably he's going to disenchant here. But if I can counter the disenchant, I think that Rich is in some serious trouble here. Playing the disenchant, there is a counter spell, and this is big. This is big, because that means that Rich now only has four mountains. And that means he basically cannot do anything, and I'm, I don't know if he plays... Uh, of course, I, I just saw the deck list, but I don't believe he plays with any basics. He does play, of course, with Moxen. So if he can find the right Mox, he can maybe do something. He just needs the Mox Pearl in addition to Shannon in hand. Now I'm playing a chain. He can send it back, choosing not to. And I think that's a good decision. So he, go, he goes to 14. And what I have to do now is be really, really patient. And let's see what Rich can do. If he can find a way out of this Blood Moon... And he just has to discard, so there goes an If Biff Afrit. Really nice card. It's a 3-3 from the Arabian Nights, and it's it has a build in Hurricane, so it's really cool. Now playing out my second Blood Moon, just to make absolutely sure that I don't give Rich an opening. And now he can play his Surrender Afrit because he found that basic island, so he can finally do something. And I'm casting a counter spell here. That's pretty brutal. And playing a basic mountain on top of all the mountains that I already have at the moment. And for me, this is a great position to be in because I can just do whatever I want and also see if I can collect, collect enough counter spells in my hand to do something when Rich is able to play out just anything. And I have to double Blood Moon here, so even a single disenchant will not give him an opening. And this is good, this is a time twister. There is a double bolt from my side, so that means he goes to 8. I'm not sure why I'm not shuffling in that Loa. Maybe because I, I put it like upside 
down, kind of landscapey. I'm thinking that it's exiled, but it's not exiled. So I mean, I should just shuffle it back. Okay. I decide not to. I guess I just made it a gentleman's game. And interesting, interesting to see this, uh, to look back at this. I'm just completely forgetting to shuffle in that Loa. It's still Richard's turn. Um, and he's playing a Surrender a Freed. The question is, will I counter it or will I just use a Control Magic? I think countering this card is important. Decide not to... I guess I didn't draw any counter spells or I would have countered that Chaos Orb for sure. And so despite the double Blood Moon, uh, Rich has managed to play out two threats here on the board. Let's see what I can do playing out my own Chaos Orb. After playing out that Soul Ring, passing the turn here. He taps a land to activate his Chaos Orb. And let's see, he's choosing his target, choosing one of the two Blood Moons. And here's the flip, putting it in slow-mo, bam, nice hit, Rich. And that's one of the Blood Moons is gone, so all he needs now is a Disenchant and of course a white mana source. And I still have my Chaos Orb here, but I'm choosing not to use it yet. Instead, I'm using a Side Blast after the damage and boom oh it's over actually i'm not even playing it on the surrender per of course playing it on his life total because he was on on eight and because of the damage by the surrender per okay good thinking good thinking timmy just complimenting myself here <laughs> guess what else can you do um okay so we are going to sideboard and uh we'll probably see some blue and red elemental blast wars coming up in game number two so see you in a moment game number two is about to start and i think that you know um rich will probably have boarded in some uh some more weapons against those blood moons so i don't think blood moon will be as dominant uh, as it was in the first game and look at that riches taking a mulligan it seems so he's going down to six starting with the basic island cracking a lotus there's a thunder spirit okay <laughs> wow that is cool you don't see that often you know black lotus into a thunder spirit wow rich that is nice that's very sweet to see attacking here and i gladly take that damage that's really cool and a passing turn after playing at savannah so i'm on 18 here Playing my City of Brass, that means that Counter Magic is turned on, but hey, he's got the Thunder Spirit, so he's all good. Playing his own City of Brass passing turn. Let's see here, playing a Mishra's Factory. And attacking here for two, so I'm going to 14 here. So this, this Thunder Spirit has already dealt six damage, and this is interesting, another card coming from the sideboard, King Suleiman. And this is obviously a card put in there because he's expecting me to play with Surrender Pafrits. But I'm actually playing with City in a Bottle main. Obviously playing a City in a Bottle now wouldn't be all that good for me. And look at that, I'm finding another library of Alexandria. I also found one in the previous game, so I'm very lucky here. Going to 12, by the way. I need to... Oh, it's getting worse here. Can I counter this one? Going to 11 playing a Mana Drain over that Chaos Orb, of course, wanting to protect my Loa. That means I've got two colorless mana in my next main phase, but I have to take care of that Thunder Spirit. I'm on 11 here, playing a second island. What am I gonna do with the mana? Using the two colorless to play my own Chaos Orb. And I'll probably have to flip. And there's a Disenchant upon activation, but there is a counter spell this is nice. This means that I can use, I can flip, but I'm also losing cards here. So let's have a look. Getting everything ready here. I think I flip on the Thunder Spirit, if I'm not mistaken. And okay, I guess uh, I'm looking at it again. Putting the card there. Am I changing my, I can I cannot change my mind. I've paid activation. Okay, there we go. And there's the flip, and it's a hit, and I believe, yes, it was on that Thunder Spirit that had already dealt, I believe, 8 damage? Really nice to see that opening play with the Black Lotus. Taking damage here, going to 10, playing Aloha. So at this point, I kind of decided, because I had to play that counter spell, 
um, you know, to just empty my hand and get away from the loa. And uh, I'm showing it here. And there's a story behind this one. If you don't know it yet, um, I'll have a little info card appearing and you can click on a video. I made a little video about it. It's about Dave Howell and his nickname Snark because he's the person that actually signed this card. And Rich is doing nothing. Only two cards in hand here. And he's got that basic island and it's Savannah tapping here for four and playing a Suchi. So let's see if he can play a Swords or a Disenchant here. So he is going to 14. Playing another Suchi second main phase. This is risky because when or if he draws a balance, I'm losing both of my creatures. And remember, we're also playing with Atlantic rules here. So when he takes care of my Suchi, Suchis, I should say, I can get mana burned, although I have that factory to pump the mana in. And look at, though he actually can't play it. I want to say he's playing a Surrender Perfreed, but he can't because of that city in a bottle. Wow, and that means victory. And in both of the games, you actually, first game, you saw the power of the Blood Moon. And second game, you saw the power of the city in a bottle. So both of these cards were very, very important uh, for me in this matchup. I think this was a really nice second game. That means that Counterburn takes the victory here. But when I was playing with Rich, I said, you know, obviously I want to see more of your deck. So what we did is we played another game uh, against another deck now. That is something that's coming up later on the channel. So if you want to see more of Rich's deck, and there's really more to it, um, then keep an eye on the channel because pretty soon I will be posting that second uh, match that we played, and that was quite exciting. For now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time. Oh, wait. I'm forgetting the end scroll. Of course, we're first going to look at the end scroll of my Patreons that are supporting me on Patreon. Patreon. Um, if you want to support me as well, you can check out the Patreon page. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for now. Like, subscribe, share this video on your socials. You can ring a bell. That's a good, a notification bell. I understand that's very helpful if you can do that. Um, for now, thank you and see you next time. Just think it's a samba kazee!